Hey, what's up guys? I'm Snowzeros for Boot Sequence, and well, this is your Boot Sequence. Roll the intro, please. OAMD, always here to be snarky. The Intel giveaway of the 8086K CPUs is now being hijacked by AMD's marketing team. They will offer a 16 core 1950X Threadripper in exchange for your 8086K if you win. Now I don't mind the pissing contest they have here, but AMD, come on. You're only doing this to 40 winners in the US? No, that's not how you make a statement. You either go big or you go meh, and you pretty much went meh. Don't get me wrong, I love AMD, but they could have done better here. Make this 4,000 winners out of the 8,086, and then I'll call you savage. What do you guys think? I get that it's a good stunt, but isn't 40 a little cheap? Speaking of AMD, it seems the AM4 platform is having some limitation with the BIOS chips. Let me explain. When you turn on your computer, the motherboard checks which CPU you have. For it to support every processor in the AMD family, the BIOS has to contain all of the microcode required for those processors. And what happens when you're out of space on the BIOS chip? Well, you can't support all of the CPUs, so how are they going to fix it? Well, some of the manufacturers will fix that issue by having a bigger BIOS chip, while others are going to drop older CPU compatibility. Remember, AM4 is supposed to last at least four years, according to AMD, so we should expect more CPUs to get dropped every year, unless, of course, they make the BIOS chips bigger. Moving on, we've got bezels. You might like them or not, but how do we get rid of them? Well, so far, we've had the notch and the pop-up camera. Well, the latest Oppo phone, the Find X, decided to ditch the notch for a pop-up camera system. Now, what is really cool about this, in my opinion, is that instead of a small, fragile square that pops up of your device, a whole chunk of the phone will pop up, revealing the front-facing, rear-facing, and the 3D face scanning cameras. The good thing, too, is that the camera will be available for sale in North America through some carriers compared to the NES which is not, that's the Vivo NEX. It's also going to be priced lower than the current Samsung and LG flagship devices around $700. Only downside in my opinion is that it doesn't have a headphone jack or a fingerprint scanner, and of course, you lose the waterproofness with that. What do you think of the mechanism? Personally, I prefer that a lot compared to the NEX's little square. Let me know down below what you think. And now for a new segment I'm going to call Watch the robots take our jobs and get better and better at everything we do until the world is no more than steel, silicon, and red glowing ash. Wow, I got a little carried away there. IBM created an AI that will literally argue with you. Project Debater will analyze a topic using several hundreds of millions of articles that it assumes are accurate, and when you least expect it, well actually you're gonna expect it because you're debating it, but it will create a speech describing those points. It won't just give you an opening statement, it also will create rebuttals or even analyze the pace of your speech and spit out some jokes. Check this out. The IBM Debater can have all the opinions in the world, but IBM Debater does not pay taxes, and we do. You are speaking at the extremely fast rate of 218 words per minute. There is no need to hurry. Whew, I would not want to be in that debater's shoes. Anyways, it's still in the early stages and I can't wait to see it debate at a presidential election. Then we have NVIDIA who created an AI that could revolutionize the slow-mo video landscape. It uses deep learning to turn a 30 frames per second video into a 240 frame slow-mo clip. That's eight times slower. While you could do that using software available today, none of those use deep learning to find out what is happening on the screen. This could actually be a game changer. The best part is they're focusing this technology for it to be integrated into mobile devices. I like that. And now for some gaming news. We now know what PC specs were used to run the demos of Cyberpunk 2077 at E3, and they did not skimp. It had an 8700K and a 1080 Ti. I mean, the game probably hasn't even started its optimization stage, so let's hope they can bring it down to Xbox One levels of the game by the release date. 
Then we have Fallout 76, which has revealed some information in its FAQ that the beta will be on Xbox One first, then PC, then PS4. Bethesda always had a preference for releasing updates and mod supports on Xbox first, so it's not that surprising, but nowadays, betas release so close to the launch, I wonder if the developers have any time to make changes, or are they just testing the servers? And now to answer a question from you guys, we have, well, nothing. There weren't any questions in the last video, so feel free to put one down below. Meanwhile, I just wanted to let you guys know that I will be moving soon, so expect to see not only changes in the set, but also the possibility of me shooting in front of boxes while I'm moving. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to stay frosty and click right here to see the latest video, right here, and right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be muy caliente, greatly appreciated, all right? I'm sorry, didn't want to cough. Stay frosty!